jeez. Oh, golly. Oh, hey, welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. This is Brian. Today I'm gonna to take you through seven items I bought early in my woodworking career that I wish I wouldn't have. And then seven items that I replaced them with. So join me today as we take a look at my recommendation. All right, the first thing on my list is the scroll saw. This scroll saw is made by Porter Cable and it's one of the first power tools I ever purchased. I thought this would be something that I'd be using all the time, but that's just not the case. The reason I purchased this scroll saw was because I thought I would be making a lot of interior cuts in which I would need to place the saw blade through the workpiece and cut around. But that just doesn't happen that often in my woodworking. Some of the nice features of the scroll saw are that it has a nice little light that allows you to see where you're cutting on your workpiece and it's also got a nice little blower that allows you to blow the sawdust as you're cutting. As you can see, this allows you to make some really tight cuts in your workpiece, but that's just not something I do. And frankly, I use my bandsaw for that. And the interior cuts, well, that just doesn't happen for me. So what should I have purchased besides the scroll saw? Well, that's an easy question. I should have purchased a jigsaw. A couple days after buying that scroll saw, I went to Home Depot and picked up this jigsaw by Ryobi. This thing does everything I want it to do and more. I consistently use this for years after I purchased my scroll saw. After that, I upgraded to the Carvex by Festool. If you want really accurate, really precise cuts, this is the tool for you. But for the beginner woodworker, the Ryobi jigsaw will do just fine. The next purchasing mistake I made in my woodworking career was purchasing this Rikon disc and belt sander. This sander is completely underpowered. With just a little bit of pressure on the sanding belt and the sanding disc, it seizes up all the time. The dust collection is terrible. When working with pieces, dust flies everywhere. The main reason I purchased this was so that I could sand interior pieces and get into tight crevices. Into a 10,000 foot crevice right at the base of this glacier. Do you know what the lamb says? No. Gunga galunga. Gunga, gunga la gunga. That I couldn't get into with a normal sander. I also purchased it so I could do roundovers on corners and create a nice rounded profile. Definitely don't get this. I'll show you exactly what to get. All right, this is one of the best deals at Home Depot. This is the rigid belt and spindle sander. This thing works great for flattening edges, rounding over corners, it also does a great job of doing interior sanding with a spindle sander. And I'll show you exactly how that works in just a second. Now I don't have the dust collection hooked up right now and it does okay, it's not great. But it does have a nice port that attaches actually to any sort of standard shop vac, which is great. Now I primarily use this for the belt sanding capability, but let's take a look at to see how easy it is to switch out to a spindle sander. You simply unlock the belt sander, remove the belt sander, slide over the spindle sander, place a locking washer on top, and simply lock it into place. Now it's that easy, and you can see it's an automatic spindle sander. Now let's talk routers for a minute. When I got into woodworking, I knew I needed a router, I just didn't know what kind. So I purchased a fixed base router, then I purchased a plunge base router. After a few years, I ended up with a Festool router. Underneath my cabinet, I've got a Bosch router. So you obviously need them, but what do you need when you're first starting out? Well, here's the answer. The good news is you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on your first router. If I had to do it all over again, I wish this would have been my first router. This is a DeWalt Palm router. This thing is light, easy to use, and easy to control. These are all features that a beginning woodworker wants in their first router. So let's take a look at some of the features of this router. So this is the corded version of this DeWalt Palm router. This router has a nice speed adjustment at the very top. Directly below that is the on and off switch. 
To remove the router from the frame, it's simple to do. Simply unlock and slide the router from its base. Another nice feature of this router is that you can make micro adjustments to the height of it. By leaving the frame unlocked, you can turn this knob and it will lower and raise the router bit as you see fit. Once you're satisfied, lock back into place. Now let's see this router in action as we use a template bit to even out these two pieces of wood. As you can see, these two pieces of wood are completely flush and completely smooth. All right, I had to dig this old boy out of the back of my workshop. This is my first miter saw. This one is made by Ryobi like a lot of my first tools. I outgrew this fairly quickly. The reason being that the depth of cut in this miter saw is only about five inches. When you're trying to cross cut boards, you're dealing with a lot of wood that's over five inches, so this thing didn't last me very long. Let me show you what you should buy. So every beginning woodworker needs to move on from that Ryobi miter saw and get a Festool Capex. This is the ideal saw for any beginning woodworker. Just kidding. Let's show you what you need to get. All right, this is the real deal. This is a DeWalt 10 inch sliding or compound miter saw. This thing has an amazing cut of approximately 14 inches long. This thing has some amazing features, including angle cuts all the way up to 60 degrees. Not only does it allow you to create perpendicular cuts, but it also allows you to create angled cuts from the side, up to 45 degrees. Lastly, another feature that I use quite often is this trenching feature. You simply slide this block into place and it allows you to stop your cut at a certain height. This is ideal if you don't want to cut through your entire piece of wood. When you first start woodworking, you wonder whether or not you're going to be a hand tool guy or a power tool guy. Or maybe you're like me. You start off with power tools and then you start using hand tools. The first planer that I ever purchased was this cobalt planer from Lowe's. This thing was rough when I got it. It took a long time of sharpening with my diamond sander. And finally, I was able to get it to a point where it actually created some nice clean shavings and a nice smooth surface. But if you know you're going to be into hand tools right off the bat, I would recommend instead of spending $20 on a cheap planer like this, get a nice planer that's about a hundred bucks. This one's by Bench Dogs and comes with some really hardened steel and creates a nice smooth surface every time you use it. This surface is so smooth that a lot of times you don't even need to sand it. Now let's talk about something that may seem like it's a little silly, and that's the pencil. Now when I first started woodworking, every woodworker was recommending Graphic Gear 1000 on YouTube. And the reason being that as you're done with using your pencil, you can simply click the top and the lead will retract inside the body of the pencil. Now that's great, but the pencil is quite fragile. As you can see here, I have a variety of these broken pencils that have not broken by me putting undue stress on them, but have actually broken by me using them in real life woodworking experience. You can even see, but from this pencil here, that the tip of the pencil is actually bent. This was bent for me using my square and drawing a line on my surface. For me, there is no substitute for the standard mechanical pencil. For me, I prefer the seven millimeter lead as it doesn't break as easily as the five millimeter. I can use it my square and if it breaks, I'm not out 20 or $30, but simply a click by my pencil to reestablish the lead. Real woodworkers only use hardwood, bro. You're not a woodworker unless you use hardwood. Dude, that's a bunch of BS. Most woodworkers start off with pine. I know I did. Pine is easy to find. It's super easy to use. And frankly, it's a lot cheaper than hardwood. So why not start off with something like that? It gives you the ability to figure out which tools you're comfortable with. And if you make a mistake, you run to Home Depot and you pick up a couple of two by fours. That's it. So when you're first starting out, go to Home Depot and buy some two by fours. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this short video on some of the mistakes I made in purchasing tools in my early woodworking career. 
If you're so inclined and you think I've earned it, I'd love to get your subscription. Leave a like and I'll see you again soon. Thanks again and take care.